Georgie Kepp when you take one steadfast mission to make a hyper-efficient electric boat and a team of incredible engineers and 10,000 hours of simulations. Well, a flying boat, naturally. This is The Fully Charged Show. Conventional power boats are, are actually big polluters. If you look at Sweden alone, uh, where we're based, uh, the uh, leisure boat fleet accounts for uh, a, quite a large amount of, of, uh, of the emissions. So if you compare it to domestic flight, the emissions from leisure boats is one third of the domestic flight, although leisure boats are only used about 30 hours per year on average. Electrification of the marine world has definitely lagged the automotive world. And the reason is simple. Water is much more dense than air, which means it takes substantially more energy to move through water than it does through air. So what's the implication to boats? Well, either it means that we accept a big range penalty, or it means adding more batteries and therefore more weight and cost, or alternatively, we could remove the drag forming component altogether. And that's exactly what the team here have done in Stockholm. Candela have produced the C8, which is a boat on a hydrofoil, which means that they can reduce drag by up to 80% and think they can get ranges four times greater than their electric boat competitors. So we went for hydrofoils mainly because we wanted the, the long range and the high speed, uh, which you get in conventional boats. So uh, if you go hydrofoiling, you reduce drag by about 80% compared to a conventional hull, and that's the key to long range on batteries. But you also get these side effects, such as no slamming in waves because you fly over them, so you, you can't get seasick in a candela. And there's, uh, uh, also, it's also a very silent boat. And of course, it's super cheap to operate and uh, also uh, very easy to maintain because it's an electric drive. It was a huge demand for the C8 when it came out because people had been, been waiting for a boat that could uh, do the same thing as their combustion engine boats, uh, but also had other benefits. So uh, we've had a huge influx of, of customers from, from day one and we sold uh, more than 100 boats in, in uh, eight months, uh, which I think makes the C8 the market leading boat in this size, not just for electric, but also for the, for the premium end, beating some fossil fuel brands which is great fun. So we're out here driving, or should I say sailing, this 28-foot C8 Candela. And this is actually a prototype version. It's the second prototype of the C8. So it's a 28-foot um, luxury speedboat. Now this one has a 44 kilowatt hour battery, which actually doesn't sound like very much. And it's not really. Um, it's about the same as a Vauxhall e Corsa. But the amazing thing is, is that if you have something that's super, super efficient like this, you actually don't need to sort of cram it with batteries, which are of course just gonna add loads more weight. So a couple of other things, this has a range of about 57 normal miles or land miles, uh, but 50 nautical miles. Now that doesn't sound like a tremendous amount, particularly when you compare it to, you know, a petrol car. But then when you consider that water is 830 times more dense than air, and actually these numbers start to make sense. There are other things that um, Candela have done incredibly well. So all of the infotainment that's been developed in-house, all of the materials have been developed in-house as well. It's incredibly vertically integrated. And that really comes down to the fact that they haven't just got boat people involved in this team, but aeronautical engineers, uh, automotive engineers, software engineers, a whole host of incredible people and incredible minds coming together to build this astonishing piece of kit. So this is an old prototype that we're stood in front of here, but underneath here we can see the T-foil, which is the hydrofoil that makes the boat actually fly. And a hydrofoil works very, very similarly to an aerofoil, which makes an aeroplane fly. And essentially what you have is a shape which turns flow downwards, and it's that downwards flow that creates lift. And you can feel this in action if you put your hand out of a car window when you're driving along. Changing the angle of your hand, you can feel the different impacts of lift. But in this instance here, it is turning the flow downwards by creating a pressure difference between top and bottom. So we've got a fast moving 
low pressure field on the top and a slow moving high pressure region on the bottom. And it is that pressure difference which generates lift, lifting the boat out of the water until that lift is balanced by the weight of the boat and it flies seamlessly along. But of course, if hydrofoils were that easy, we'd have hydrofoils on all boats. And we know that that isn't the case. This is actually a very unique approach. And the reason is it requires a number of different technologies to come together to make this possible. So one of the key ingredients for Candela is their C-Pod motor, which they have designed and developed entirely in-house. It is a permanent magnet motor that sits underneath the water. And normally you would see these as outboard motors that sit above the water. But this sits under the water, which has the added benefit, of course, that you can have cooling or natural cooling by the water. Um, this is tiny. It is 10.5 centimetres in diameter and can deliver a maximum power of 60 kilowatts, which is what it takes to get the boat out of the water. Um, and when it's cruising, it does something more in line of sort of 20 to 27 um, kilowatts, so that it can cruise at 20 to 23 knots. But the other thing that you'll notice is that it's highly, highly efficient. It's actually got two counter-rotating propellers, which means that all of that energy is going into forward thrust rather than creating lossy wakes at the back. So the age-old question about kilowatt hours per mile, or in this case, kilowatt hours per nautical mile, and this is doing about 1.3, well, going between 1.2 to 1.3 kilowatt hours per nautical mile, which if you prefer the other way around, that means it's about uh, 0.8 miles per kilowatt hour. So obviously comparing that to a road car, which might do anywhere between three and six um, miles per kilowatt hour, it doesn't sound so brilliant, but, if you consider that A, water is so much more dense than air, and B, you can get eight passengers on here, uh, you can even have two people sleeping in the front, there's even a toilet on board, and suddenly this becomes actually pretty impressive. The boat flies when the upwards lift balances the downward force that's generated from the weight of the boat. So clearly the lighter the boat, the less force that you need to lift the boat upwards, and the more efficient the overall system will be. Um, so the team at Candela have put a lot of effort into lightweighting this boat and making it as light as possible. And so I've chosen to make the entire thing from carbon fibre. That is of course more expensive, but if you get those gains back in, the, in reducing their overall cost of running this thing, then, then that is a super positive thing. Now, carbon fibre starts off as a material, and I always forget this, and I think it's crazy that this, this flexible material, can turn into this. Um, now the early prototypes they made from 45 different sections, but this later version is made from a single mould. Um, so very, very simple to produce um, and very, very strong and simple. So at the moment, the C8 is priced at 290,000 euros, excluding VAT. And that's, uh, both are expensive, but, but that's the same price point as a, a conventional fossil fuel power boat in a high-end segment. Uh, but the big thing about using hydrofoil is that you can use a fairly small battery. Uh, and that means that we can, over time, bring down the costs and, and reach cost parity with uh, less expensive fossil fuel boats. Because the reason we're doing this is to eventually replace the big fleets of, of fossil fuel power boats around the world. Driving the C8 is around 95% cheaper than driving a conventional boat. Uh, not only in terms of fuel cost, because filling uh, a 28 foot boat up with gasoline uh, would cost about 400, maybe 500 euros. Uh, if you go the same distance in a C8, you pay maybe uh, 15 euros. Uh, so that's a huge difference, but you also have the service costs because a conventional outboard needs uh, a lot of servicing every 40 hours or so. You need to exchange filters, oil and so on. And with the C8, we don't have anything of that. We don't have a cooling system, just an electric drivetrain, uh, which needs servicing after 3000 hours. So it's basically a lifetime for the average leisure boat. And lastly, but perhaps most importantly, are all of the active control systems. So this is the software that's doing constant adjustments so that the boat is as stable as possible. Because if you think about it, a boat isn't just having to move forwards. It's yawing, pitching, rolling, twisting, heaving, surging, basically moving up and down or twisting and turning with six degrees of freedom. And so there are some very, very complicated control systems that mean it can be as stable as possible. So a few moments ago, we stopped for a second and we were on the water, so not up on the hydrofoil. And a boat passed and suddenly you felt that we were really rocking in the wake. 
But when you're up in hydrofoil, this is incredibly smooth. I'm always forgetting that I'm on the water. It's much more like ice skating or sort of gliding over a surface. So this functions as a massive computer, which means that to do so, there are 10 sensors of an undisclosed type of sensor, so top secret, and they're basically forming a 3D image of what's going on in the water. So it's doing that, it's adjusting that hydrofoil about 100 times a second. So that means, you know, since I started talking, that's about 1,000 or sort of 1,500 adjustments that it's already done. And the result is this really smooth and unbumpy experience, which is fantastic if you happen to get a little bit queasy at sea because it eliminates all of that roll and bump. So apart from being really good at managing other people's wakes through this careful um, control system that's putting up on the hydrofoil, it also means that this boat doesn't really create a wake, which is fantastic for marine life. It's fantastic, uh, fantastic for going through sort of um, slow speed areas, etc. But also, just means that it kind of feels like we're on a ghost ship. We're going through the water, not making that much noise, going really, really smoothly, and leaving hardly any evidence that we've even been here. So we think the, the broader impact of this technology will be on, on electrifying commercial vessels. So we're making a vessel which is called a P12 for the city of Stockholm, uh, which will run in traffic next year uh, between a suburb and a Stockholm. And that one will be faster than the car or the bus and also the conventional ferries that are, are uh, trafficking this route. Uh, so that's the next step, making commercial vessels using electric hydrofoil technology. So using the waterways hasn't really made sense uh, because conventional ferries are expensive to operate and slow because they have to go slow because they create a weight. So if you make electric ferries that fly, you can uh, have a faster transports uh, and you can also reduce the operating costs by up to 60, 70% easily. And then you can connect different boroughs and, and different uh, cities perhaps through rivers and waterways uh, at a very low cost for the taxpayers. I think uh, if you come back here in 2030, uh, you will see a lot of Candela ferries shuttling around passengers in Stockholm, but not only in Stockholm, a lot of cities we uh, think this will be a global phenomenon. And I think the majority of, of uh, new leisure power boats will be electric and hydrofoiling. Uh, and a lot of them will be Candelas and there will definitely be other brands as well. We have just come back from flying on an electric boat, which is something that should feel absolutely insane and yet felt so normal. And that's because it's this amazing coming together of some incredible engineering, uh, some sophisticated powertrains, clearly an appetite for some social and environmental change as well. And that's really exciting. And perhaps what's more exciting is that these could be a form of mass transit in cities in the not too distant future. And I am so excited to see that become a reality. Uh, so if you've liked what you've seen, please do comment, like and subscribe or do any of the things that you can see listed below. And if you have been, thanks for watching.